Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Is that your story this morning? We all have a story, don't we? Amen. But we want to focus on the story of who our Savior is. And if this is your story, because you have to trade in your story for his story. So won't you put your hands together for his story. Amen. Amen. I greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank the Lord for bringing us together. Amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary. And I greet all of you out there on social media, all of you on Zoom. Zoomers, wave your hand. We don't ever want you to feel as if you are not part of us. Amen. Many of you are local. Many of you are in other parts of the country. But we all belong to the Lord. And you took time out to worship the Lord on the Lord's day. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. I'm happy to be a Christian. I'm happy to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm just happy that he loves me. And I'm just happy that he takes care of me. And I'm just happy that he knows the worst about me. And he still loves me. And I feel very at peace with him. I don't know if he's at peace with me, but I'm at peace with him because I find no fault in him. Amen. And I'm not looking anywhere else for my help, for my peace, for my security, for my safety. It's all because of him. That's my story. I don't know what your story is, but I just know that's my story. And every day, as a the, the song is falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that I've ever done. Glory to God. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I'm never what? Neglected. Amen. Falling in love with him is the best thing that I've ever done. Amen. I'm going to keep moving because then I'll be acting like Reverend Laverne. So. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I thank all of you for being here on behalf of the leaders and the laity. I welcome you to the Lord's day. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Genesis 28, and I'll be reading very quickly. It's quite a few verses. But I'm going to keep it moving, and I hope you don't mind me doing that. Genesis 28, beginning at verse 12 and ending at verse 19. Amen. Those in the sanctuary will stand. Those of you on Zoom, just grab your devices and follow me, please. Genesis 28, I'm beginning at verse 12 from the King James Version, and I will end at verse 19. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And he dreamed, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest to thee will I give thee and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, to the south, and in thee and in all thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again unto this land, for I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely this, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it 
and he called the name of that place Bethel. For the name of that city was called Luz at the first. I'm going to read the next verse, um, all the way to the 21st verse. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in his way, that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone which I set for a pillar shall be God's house. And all that thou give me, I will surely give thee the tenth unto thee. So far the reading and hearing of God's word. This, this afternoon, I'm going to try to do this very quickly. The title of the sermon is The Dreadful Place. The Dreadful Place. We find that the Hebrew name for Genesis is meaning in the beginning. It's the first book of the Pentateuch. It takes us to important beginnings such as creation, the fall of man, the early years of the nation of Israel. But in it, you'll also find God and man, sin and grace, as some commentary state, wrath and mercy, covenant and redemption. It's in the beginning of this book, and it is also the theme for the whole Bible. As you go to Revelation, it's the same theme. So Genesis sets the tone for what the Bible will deal with. Man, salvation, wrath, mercy, redemption. In this particular chapter, we are talking about Jacob, his story, his narrative. Now, I know, you know, we would like to talk about people who do well. We like stories about winners. We like stories about people who are heroes. We like stories about people who are blameless and faultless. We like stories about people who have outstanding character. But this is not about that kind of person. He's a shyster. He's a hustler. He's a supplanter. He's a two-timer. He's a backstabber. I'm so glad the Lord got him in the book. Aren't you glad? Because many of us are shysters. If you've never been one, you're going to be one one day. And so Jacob, remember, was a twin to his brother Esau. And the Bible said, and I'm not, you have to read the story. He stole his brother's birthright. His mother told him how to cover it, how to make it seem as if he was Esau. Esau was hairy, a man of the field. Jacob was a man of the house. So his mother told him how to dress himself. Esau apparently was a good cook, told him how to cook the way Esau cooked. He was just a player. He was a deceiver. Now, we all know what players mean because we have been played and we have also played. His name means supplanter. He's a man who is a snatcher. It also means heel snatcher because he snatched the heel of his brother so that he could be first out of the womb. So you would say to yourself, this man has, should be disqualified from any covenant relationship with the Lord. He received the blessing, and the blessing was not taken away from him. He stole it from his brother, and God did not revoke it. Those kinds of things bother me, because we would have snatched it back. Bring your so-and-so hips over here so we could fix it. Fighting peace. The birthright. The first of everything, the leader, he's going to carry on the name. He gets a double portion, but he got it by stealing. 
And the Bible tells us that in spite of all of that, God made a covenant with Jacob based on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't you hear that frequently? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We would have taken his name out of the print. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But this is how God deals with a player. The Bible said now he's on the run. You know, he's, he's in exile because his brother is threatening to kill him. And you would try to kill him too. And so he was sent to another country. He was to go into Syria. And so the Bible says he now decided to take a rest. Trip was, you know, tiresome. And he decided to take a rest. And he made his bed in this certain place. And it was not a house. It was just on the floor where the heavens became his covering, where the stone became his pillow. He must have been very tired. It's almost like dropped. Anywhere I drop, that's where I'm sleeping. I remember when I first started traveling past the Dana and traveling internationally, and we had to take out the plane to London, and then we had to lay over to get to where we're going. And I remember being in the area waiting for the next flight, and I fell asleep on the chair with my mouth wide open. I was so tired. I didn't care, I didn't care where I was, I was so tired. And when I woke up, somebody had taken the rings off my finger. So sometimes you get so tired that you just drop. That's, what, that's the image that came in my mind, that he was tired. It, he lay in a very cold ground for his bed, okay? The stone was his pillow, cold air. It was uneasy. It was not comfortable. And he really was tired because you, you wouldn't stay there and sleep out like that knowing that somebody is chasing you. Yeah. And that his brother could have found him and killed him. But God had him in the right place at the right time. So my first point is the latter. And while he was asleep, he had a dream. And the word ladder here means staircase. And staircase or the ladder was reaching from earth to heaven. Angels were ascending and descending. This was the medium of communication between heaven and earth. This is the way messages came from heaven. Angels were on an errand. They were bringing down message. This is the communication piece. We have the internet. We surfed, surfed the net. Well, this is the net of Jacob's time where the messages came from heaven. Heaven and earth have been separated by sin. But now Jacob is having an experience where heaven now is getting ready to communicate with him. And so he is in a place for a communication. And it was a place or an emblem of mediation. This communication required a mediator. It was a type, pastor, an overseer, Trish, of shadow of things to come. Sin separates us from God. But Jesus came and opened up the way, and he is our mediator. Mediator for players. <laughs> I'm, almost, I'm coming in soon. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Mediator for deceivers and for liars, for fallen people, and for people who are not worthy. Hebrews 9 and 15 says, for this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Ephesians 2 and 14, for he is our peace, 
who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of patrician between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So Jacob was experiencing a shadow of things to come. Having a mediator who can handle our mess so that we can be accepted in the sight of God. Hebrews 4.15, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Thank God for the Holy Ghost ladder. Thank God for the stairway that made the way possible. So that's what a ladder meant for Jacob, and that's what it intimates for us. The second point is the appearance. The ladder, at the top of the ladder, the Lord stood, and Jacob was at the bottom. You see where Jacob was? He was at the bottom. Players are at the bottom. Holiness is at the top. So the Lord was at the top, and Jacob was at the bottom, and he, re he received some benefits. First, he reveals himself to the sleeper. So the first thing that happens in the appearance is that God reveals himself and identifies himself. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of your father, and I'm your covenant father so God identifies himself to the player in other words you're a skunk but I'm still your daddy <laughs> you're low down but I have an arrangement with you listen this blows my mind I don't know what you're all feeling cuz see maybe you forgot your skunkishness but I live with mine every day I am your covenant father. The second thing is he renews his promise that was transgenerational. I'm not snatching it for, from you because you messed up. I don't play that. I don't make a covenant and then change my mind. I'm a God that keeps my word even unto the third and fourth generation of them that love me. I made a promise to Abraham, your grandfather, that the seed shall be blessed, the land shall be yours, and that the whole race shall be blessed from the west, the east, the north, and to the south. And when I make a covenant, I don't break it. Either while you're skunking, I don't break it. Jesus. Genesis 17, 26, 27, 27. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. This is not just about Jacob. This is about us. The third thing is he then promises Jacob to protect him mean to tell me this deceiver and hustler and player is under your protective custody what kind of mess is that you should throw him to the wolves the wolves should eat him he stole from his brother he deceived his blind father come on here he was a player and a hustler and you are going to what protect him not only protect him but bring him back safely <laughs> what kind of God is this Isaiah 41 and 10 so do not fear for I am with you 
do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the righteous hand or my righteous hand. So we find that the appearance confirmed and affirmed him. Who affirms a player? Who affirms someone in their skunkish behavior? Who affirms someone who is doing everything that they ought not to do? The only one that can do that is God. The third thing is, this is a dreadful place. When you woke out of his sleep, he says, surely the Lord is in this place. I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is it this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. That is, God has made his place a resident for his communication. This is the place I'm communicating. Anywhere that God jacks you up, it's going to be dreadful. Anytime God gets ready to talk to you a certain way, it's going to be dreadful. Anytime God gets ready to wheel you in, wheel you in and bring you into him for your divine purpose, it's going to be dreadful. And Jacob was having this awesome place, this place that brought humility. Why is it awesome? Because he was humbled. Why is it awesome? Because he's having communion. How could God have communion with a man like this? But God sought intimacy and communion. God sought to secure or declare his covenant relationship while he's on the run. <laughs> this is not Jacob returning the blessing. This is not Jacob going back and getting right with his brother. This is not Jacob going back to his father and say, I give back the blessing because I stole it. This is Jacob with the stolen blessing on the run. <laughs> I can't do this well. I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. Because <laughs> uh, Pentecost folk don't like to hear this. Do not, Exodus 3 and 5, do not come any closer, God said. Take off your shoes, your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now, this is a murderer now. This is another one. This is another one on the run. Mo Moses had just killed a man. What's going on in the Bible? What is going on in the Bible where he makes covenant with murderers and deceivers and backstabbers and liars? Moses had just killed a man and he's running. And God said, come close. Take your shoes off. I'm getting ready to talk to you. Lord, have mercy. I don't care where you are this morning. When he gets ready to talk. Doesn't matter who you are or where you've been. John 5 and 15, the commander of the Lord's army replied, to Joshua rather, 5 and 15, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And Joshua did so. Samuel, in 1 Samuel 3 and 7, the Bible says he had not yet known the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. He was young. He was young. So God reveals himself to even children. And the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here am I, you call me. And Eli said, the Lord was calling you, boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord. For thy servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay, lay down. And here was Samuel lying down. He was lying down near where Eli was. And God called him. Psalm 68, 35. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. He was in the right place. 
He was in a place to communicate. Doesn't matter your presentation. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter where you've been. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Come on, in sin did your mama conceive you. Ah, we were born an offense to God. We were born not wanting God. We were born not even wanting church, God, man, or anybody else. But God sets a place to communicate what was what was uh, 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 Jacob's response he was afraid and he said how dreadful is this place now what does the word dreadful mean in this text it means it was awesome angels running up and down the ladder some of us would have had a, had a, uh, just started screaming, think it was a nightmare. You understand? Angels running up and down the ladder. And the Lord standing at the top of the ladder talking. What an awesome experience. It's a place of reverence. You see the terribleness of God. You see the power of God. You see how great he is. He, we have reduced him. Today we have reduced God to just a companion. We reduced God to a way maker. We have reduced God to somebody who gives us money and gives us a place to live. Oh, but he's an awesome God. He's a God of infinite power. He's omnipotent. My God, he's omniscient. He's altogether lovely. How dreadful he is. The Bible said he's a consuming fire. You're not dealing with your God cut buddy you're dealing with the great I am if you don't believe it listen to me look at Paul the Bible said Saul before he came Paul was breathing out threatenings yes Saul was a religious man and Saul believed and had convictions very deeply so he thought what he was doing was right but the Bible said he was coming after the church he was coming after the children and the women. And the Bible said he was on his way to Damascus with another letter. This brilliant man, this educated man, this well-bred man, this well-connected man, this man that was on his way to sit on the Sanhedrin, this man of great importance in his mind, this reliable man, this faithful man, this man of conviction needed a dreadful place. Lord have mercy. <laughs> ah, I don't know about you, but I've had my dreadful places. I've had my place where I had no other choice but to say, yes, Lord. I need somebody to help me praise him right here. The dreadful place demands a yes. Bible said uh, he was on his horse and the Bible said he was knocked off his horse. Because <laughs> some of us are riding a horse. We ride in high. But the dreadful place, you got to be knocked down. At the dreadful place, you have to be reduced to humility because you're too special. <laughs> and the Bible said not only did he fall off, but a light was shone. Nobody else saw the light because you see this dreadful place is personal. The person can be in the bed with you and don't see nothing, but I bet you you see something. Ah, you could be sitting next to somebody in the church and they don't hear anything, but I bet you you feel the trembling of the Lord, the earthquake of the Holy Ghost. You know that the Lord is on your track. And the Bible said he struck him blind. You think you see too much. You think you know too much. You think you think well. I got to bring you down so you could see who I am. And when God got through with him, the Bible said he gave him an assignment. There's a dreadful place in Isaiah's life. The Bible said in the year that King Uzziah died, they opened up the curtain. The curtain was opened up. The prosthet was opened up. And the and, and the it, uh, Holy of Holies was open because Uzziah went in there to perform duties that he was not released to perform and they were bringing him out foot first because he defied God's word, he defied God's structure, he defied God's order, that he can't be king and high priest at the same time, so they were pulling him out and Isaiah was around the church, around the area, he was in a religious atmosphere but he didn't see anything 
king before. Ah, but he had a dreadful moment. Lord have mercy. In the year that they brought him out, I got a chance to look. What do you see? I saw the Shekinah. I saw the glory of the Lord. I didn't see his face. I just saw his train. And his train filled the temple. Ah, and the angels cry holy Lord have mercy it wrecked me it wrecked me it wrecked me you see dreadful places are designed to wreck you ah dreadful places are designed to transform you radically it's not a pat pat it's not a feel good it's not just a little tear it's designed to wreck your thoughts uh, to cancel your assignment to turn you around and set you up in the right path dreadful place it's not for you to have good church it's for God to tear down every idol and let go everything that's against him come on Isaiah he was high and lifted up train filled the temple and I heard the angels cry holy <laughs> holy ah oh, the whole earth is full of his glory and, and, and in that presence something happened to me woe is me for i am undone you can't leave the dreadful place with the same cussing tongue <laughs> when you leave it something happens to you have you ever been there that when you got up off your knees something happened to you that when you got through bending and bucking, something happened to you. That when the Lord dethroned you, something happened to you. Ruined you for the rest of your life. My God gave you a new taste, a new appetite. Let you see who you really are and what you were born for. And let you see that everything else was trash. And now you got treasure. Oh, come on here. It's a dreadful place. He said, whoa, I'm, my tongue is dirty. And God said, I got you. I knew it was dirty when you came. I knew it was dirty when I called you. I knew you got a nasty mouth when I called you. This ain't no surprise. Your mama might be surprised. Your wife might be surprised. Church people get shocked, but I ain't shocked. I know what to do with dirty mind. Open your mouth, stick your tongue out now. Stick it out, stick it out, stick it out. <laughs> I'm going to work this out for you right now. I know how to clean up nasty tongue. Live cold. And after I get clean you up, I'm going to send out a call. Whom shall I send? And who will preach for me? <laughs> the dreadful place demands a response. Here am I. Lord have mercy. Send me. You see, the problem is we're trying to give people a dreadful place. Only God could do it. Isaiah 8 and 13. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He's the one you ought to fear. He's the one you ought to dread. Leviticus 19 and 30. Observe my Sabbath and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Have reverence for this place. It may not be a cathedral, but treat it like one. <laughs> mm -hmm. It may not be a beautiful edifice yet, but we respect because this is a place of a ladder. This is where God communicates. This is where you talk to him and he talks to you. So when I talk in the bathroom, but in here something special, something special. When the congregation of the righteous gather and the word is going out, listen up, listen up, listen up. He's saying something. So you have Moses who had his dreadful place. Joshua who had his dreadful place. And then Mary. A young girl, maybe 13 years old. Some people say younger. Getting ready to do what every young girl does in that country, in that tradition, in that particular uh, 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 family, in that nation. They get ready to get married. Her husband was already chosen. It's called expouse. 
It literally means they were legally bounded together. They were just waiting for the wedding day. This ain't no experimental dating. It was fixed. She's happy and getting all her friends together because she's going to have a wedding celebration until she had a dreadful place. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> what kind of greeting is that? That ain't no grace coming. Hail Mary, I'm getting ready to have a wedding. What's wrong with you? Hail Mary, I'm getting ready to be cute. I got my bridesmaid lined up. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. What are you talking about? You're wrecking my life right now. You don't know you're destroying my life. How am I going to tell this man that I'm pregnant? How am I going to tell my mama, the community, getting ready to get the stones together to stone me? What kind of life are you giving me? Why are you turning my world upside down? For dreadful places are designed to turn your world upside down. Let me pop your balloon this morning. Let me take the bubbles out of your champagne. Dreadful places are not cute places. They're places of radical change. That's what's wrong. We haven't been there yet. Because when there's a radical change, there is something supernatural happening. You can't explain it. You can't, you can't describe it. You try to tell somebody what it is and they think you're crazy. You, you try to talk and you can't talk for something heavenly. How can this thing be? Seeing I know not a man, but the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. Ah, and you shall have a child and his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. And after she got through the Bible says she began to praise the Lord it's called Mary's Magnificat how she gives God the glory and how she honors him because something shifted her life took her path on a different direction set her up so that even today people are still saying hail Mary full of grace Lord the Lord is with me we ain't gonna remember you when you gone but hail Mary you see you don't like dreadful places but when you have a dreadful place you become a dreadful person Lord have mercy there's something awesome about you ah you change agendas you walk in the room and something shifts Ah, you stand up and open your mouth and demons go to back up. I just want God to give you a dreadful place. You all help me right here. Put your hands together for dreadful places. You pay a price for dreadful places. You want to be ordinary and accepted. You want people to think that you're cool. And there's nothing strange about you that you can fit in. <laughs> and they hate you because they know you don't fit in. They, they plan you. Huh? They know there's something about you even though you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But they can feel it. Because this is not the work of a man. This is the work of a God. Ah, and so he said, this is no, nothing but the house of God. This is not a common place. This is a place where God delights ah, to speak to his people. You see, when you mess with the house of God, you're messing with God's purpose. Eli had two sons. Hophni or F. Hophni and Phineas and he was the priest but he had raggedy sons. The Bible said there were sons of Belial and the reason why they were raggedy is because he half-heartedly correct them. You see you got to be 
courageous. Your back got to be strong to correct. And because he didn't do it, the sons did what they wanted to do. They had inherited the priesthood. So they had rights and privileges. The offerings were supposed to be consumed before they get their portion. The Bible said that they forced the people to give them the meat raw. You see, the burning of the sacrifice was a sweet smelling savor to God. God was waiting for the smoke to come up because the smoke comes up means that I have approved your sacrifice. That something is burnt up and when you're burnt up then I can use you. Ah, the Bible said they didn't want it burnt up because they didn't want God. So they wanted the raw meat and they took it off. Not only that but they met the women by the door of the sanctuary and they raped the women and misused them. They were a disgrace to the priesthood so that the people got morally discouraged and that's why the enemy was able to come in and steal the Ark of the Covenant because when you have lousy leaders, when you have fornicating leaders, when you have drunken mean leaders, when you have leaders that are perverted, perverted and out of control, the enemy eats up the church, comes in and wipes out the people and take away the glory of God and the Bible said Phineas wife was having a baby and the Bible said that they went to war and the Philistines killed Phineas and Hophni and while she was having a baby the Bible says she died but she declared when the boy was coming out Ichabod for the glory of the Lord has departed from the sanctuary ah oh, the church is a terrible place to play with uh, I suggest you play in the bar I suggest you play in the club I suggest you play in your basement but well, don't play up in no church now because this is a place where God communicates with his people may not be the best place may not be the most perfect people but lives are changed hearts are touched minds are turned around and the Bible said the glory of the Lord departed I wonder how many places of worship the glory of the Lord departed. And Jacob said, this is a dreadful place. I can't treat it like I treat my game room. Huh? I feel a wind coming now. <laughs> You can't treat it like the place you go to kick it. Huh? <laughs> this is a place where God talking to me. He talking to me. <laughs> you know, there's a certain place in your house where it ought to be a special place. Lord have mercy. There's a certain place that I sit. And I, and I know God getting ready to say something. And don't let me go in the closet. Don't let me go in the closet. It's going to get dreadful up in there. It, suddenly, the place is carved out. And God is not a place. The place can be anywhere. Your dashboard. Huh? The back seat of your car. Wherever it is, it suddenly becomes an uncommon place. It's not a cheap place where you eat potato chips and drink soda. It's a sanctified place. Ah, and that's the kind of place that Jacob felt. This ain't no ordinary place. This is a place where God stepped out of heaven and called me by my name and made arrangement for my future. I ain't playing with my future. Because nobody knows my future but God. He calls the place Bethel, the house of God. And he worshiped. Abraham worshiped. Others worship at the special place. Where is your special place? No, we have special place for other things. We have special places where we do things that, that's for us. Mm. We carved it out. You see, we carve out, you know, a man, one woman said, I got me a woman cave. So you, you, can, you can carve out a woman or man cave where you do your little stuff up in there. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, 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 your, it's your sacred space. God, but I thank God for a sacred space. 
I, I, I remember, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I know it does me because I have these little experiences that I interject in my sermon. I hope it doesn't irk you, but if it does, that's all right. I remember I was going to Baltimore to do a special, a special service, and I came in the hotel room, Pastor Brian, and, and, and Wanda was there, I guess, I don't know, remember who, but somebody was there, and, and I dropped the suitcase, and it was a beautiful hotel, nice hotel, and I dropped, and I went to sit in the chair, because the chair was so pretty, and I fell on my knees. Don't know how I got there. I wasn't praying. I just got off the plane, got out the car. I wasn't thinking of getting, you know, sanctimonious. I just wanted to sit down. And I felt something drop. It was, it was a dreadful place. A, you see, when you walk with the Lord, it can hit you anywhere. It can. <laughs> hey, shepherd of my soul. And I knelt down by that dreadful place. And the Lord said to me, after all the years of losing my daughter. Now, I'm not even thinking. I'm not even thinking. It wasn't a cry because I ain't cried. I never cried. I stopped crying. The day he told me to stop crying, I stopped crying and kept on living. But something else was left up in there. <laughs> and he wanted to clear the air. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> he wanted to make sure it don't never come up no more. It was a threat. Before you preach tonight, I got something to tell you. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh y'all have to help me uh, and I knelt down by the chair and the Lord said your daughter would have been your heartache I had to take her your heart would have been broken I took her to save her and I took her to preserve you and let me tell you something it was church Tongues and yeah, I know you all don't believe in snotting because you're sophisticated. Tongues and snot because I suddenly saw the wisdom of God that saved me from a broken heart and saved that child from a life of destruction. And I went to hollering, I went to hollering, I lit up the whole hotel like somebody because you know why I felt the power of the Holy Ghost communicating and closing a door that needs never to be open be thankful for what you have be thankful for the daughter that I gave you not the one that you lost she but the one that you have y'all ain't gonna help me praise him this morning and I saw all you ain't gonna help me <laughs> Hey, 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 come on, come on, work with me. <laughs> I left that place sealed until eternity. You ain't see me walking around here with no handkerchief on Mother's Day. Yeah, you know, I, I don't feel neglected. I feel delivered. Now, after that encounter, my final point, he made a vow. That's why we don't like dreadful places. Because dreadful places demand submission yes, yes, yes. adjustment yes, yes, yes. you hear me yes. it demands a surrender yes, yes. that's why we run from it but you can't run from it because it catches up with you and and i, I would suggest that you surrender real early because the longer you take the more dreadful it gets you know what i'm saying <laughs> it, it gets more severe so he makes a vow and he vowed and said, God, now God already promised that he would be with him. But when you on the other side of God, when you, when you doing your stuff, you, you got, you got to get assurance. When people know they're acting funky and funny and skunky, they got to get assurance. Are you sure you're going to be with me? <laughs> you, you promised to leave, never to leave me. You promised to leave. Don't, don't leave me, Jesus. You know in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you can't, Jesus, don't leave me, don't leave me. I know I don't belong here, but if you get me out of here, don't, yeah, don't leave me. Keep me where I go 
And just God make sure that I have bread to eat and close to you. I know I don't deserve it. I know I've messed up somebody else's life. How many lives have we messed up on the run? Huh? How many people's lives have we almost ruined on the run? How many people have lost hope and desire for God because we are on the run? And Jacob realized that it's the mercy of God. He wasn't arrogant. Just please, God. You said you're going to be with me. You're going to be with me, Jesus. You're going to be with me. He understood that he needed God. Take care of me, even though I don't deserve it. And as a result... I make a vow. It's your duty to respond when you're in the dreadful place. It comes with the territory. You can't have a dreadful place and you don't have a response. Every response prompted a dreadful place. Moses took off his shoes. Jake, Josh, Joshua took off his shoes. Come on here. Mary accepted the will of God. Every time Paul became, Saul became Paul and preached the gospel and wrote one third of the New Testament, it's a life changer. The place is a place where you never go back. You go forward. It's a place where you don't dilly-dally. If you're dilly-dally, you ain't get the dreadful place yet. He says, I am with you, assurance. I will be your God. And he said, listen, I made a vow. I'm going to honor you, obey you. (laughs) And everything that I get, (laughs) I'm going to give you your tenth. I know some of y'all don't believe in tithing. I understand. If you don't believe in tithing, give 90%. Since you're going to be that technical, don't give 10, just give 90 See, you're going to make it a big issue, write a book about it, make a whole seminar about it, even tell people that they've been robbed. Nobody robbed, you've been robbing. So, so just, you know, just give the 90. Since you don't like the 10, give the 90. Huh? But you see, you can't come out of that place and not want to give back. <laughs> oh, have mercy. The Lord can't wreck you to boost Kabanse. Can't wreck your life. Can't wreck your life. Can't wreck your life. And you don't want to give back. I went to North Carolina the other day, Pastor Diane, and I went to visit Elder Shirley Watson, the lady that walked me through my early years, my early years of walking with the Lord. And I just went back to say thank you. I went back to see how she was doing and to reconnect and let her know that she's ever a part of my life, ever a part of my memory, and ever a part of my gratitude. And I said, you remember the chair, the brown chair in your house? That every lunch hour when I walk from Harlem Hospital to your house to have lunch, ah, that I would kneel by the chair. Uh, You remember when I knelt by the chair with my lab coat on, thinking I'm going to go to medical school. Lord have mercy. And the Holy Ghost said, take off your lab coat because you're going into full-time ministry. It was a dreadful place. It was a place where I thought I was losing my mind. I didn't know what to say. I just started hollering, just started hollering. And she stood over in the corner and just went to rocking. She couldn't talk. She didn't say anything. She just hear the Holy Ghost coming out of my belly. I called you. <laughs> I chose you. You were mine before you were born. Lord have mercy. The devil couldn't have you. You see, he talks like that when you're in a dreadful place. Ah, when you're in a dreadful place, he start giving you history. He start bringing up records. He start opening up doors and letting you see how awesome he is. Ah, 
God, the devil couldn't take you. When the doctors told your daddy you were going to die, your daddy gave you back to me and I brought you back for me. Lord, have mercy. Now I'm collecting. I'm collecting now. I'm collecting. Ah, uh, you're going to fly off and hang up no shingles and call yourself Dr. So-and-so. Oh, you're going to stand in the pulpit. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to give your life ah, for the worthy cause of the kingdom. Oh, you're going to be battered and torn. Rejected. Your heart going to be broken. You're going to fall and slip. Oh, but I'm going to get honor out of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a dreadful place. I had plans. Hey, like you all got plans in here. Somebody got big plans. I'm almost, I'm almost finished, you all, because I feel, I feel it coming on me. Hey, God, I said you all got plans, but the Holy Ghost said, uh, you write down and I wipe out. My mother said, man, I write down and God, I wipe out. Bless her memory. He knows the way to take my soul. And after he has tried me, I'll come forth as gold. You have not called me, but I I have called you. I've chosen you to go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit will remain. That whatsoever you ask of me, I'll give it to you. I know you got plans. I know you got bills to pay. A mortgage and rent. Water bill and food bill. Clothes and shoes. Cars and houses. Oh, but I got something else for you. Ah, your life is mine. For your life is here with Christ in God wiggle yourself there and wiggle yourself here but when you get through wiggling there's a dreadful place coming because when I choose I don't lose I don't choose anything and lose it I don't want nothing that I got to lose everything that I choose I'm going to have and ladies and gentlemen I want you to know that Jacob gave him his heart his home and his treasure. He surrendered to the spirit and power and love that influenced him on that cold ground. Wasn't a hotel. Wasn't a fluffy pillar. The pillar was stone. But it was a life changing. The dreadful place is for a life-changing moment. Now, many of us think that God is asleep and that ain't nothing happening. But the Lord said to me today, I'm trusting you to announce a dreadful moment is coming. I'm calling for the ones who have a dreadful assignment. <laughs> Ooh, shall over there and so be and die. Help me, Holy Ghost, in the outside. Ish come and do the above us, Kutuskate. Jesus will not come on Sunday. Higher, higher, higher. Hey, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. Ah, he's calling and pulling in. Whether we respond or not, it's set is fixed it is a set time because God has a set purpose he has a set purpose a set place and a set people and he does not miss his appointment and his clock doesn't function like our clock I don't care how far we go and what we do we may build skyscrapers grand and tall we may build cathedrals great and small we may even conquer our habits and our vices but only what you do for Christ will last and he's coming after it now he's combing the land the church is under fire ones are coming down but God is putting up he's going to the highway and byway and picking up folk that you thought would never get it together he's getting ready to flip the script he's getting ready to shake people loose of the things that had them bound and they're gonna stand tall in the inner man and declare the whole counsel of God ah, I'm looking to see it happen for if he said it it shall come to pass and if he spoke it he will bring it through so ladies and gentlemen welcome to the dreadful place what is the 
What is the outcome of the dreadful place? You, 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 you know what I mean by Charles? Hey, God to help me. You know, you know what the dreadful place is? That you fell down the stairs and didn't break your neck. <laughs> it's the beginning of a dreadful place. You understand? How the Lord intercepted and interrupted connections. It's called a dreadful place. How the Lord cancels dates and appointments. How the Lord sends affliction. And can't nobody find out what's wrong. What is it? It's a dreadful place. <laughs> There's a shake up that he brings. The winds begin to blow. And the storm begins to rage. What's wrong? It's a dreadful place. What are you after? I'm after the one that I called. I'm after. And I'm not going to lose. Because in Matthew it says, Jesus said, you shall. He didn't say maybe. He said unto him, you shall love the Lord. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't say maybe. You shall love the Lord. Ain't no negotiation here. You're going to love him. You know how you love certain things and you lick your lips? You're going to lick your lips loving him. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart. Oh, this is not a negotiation. It's not maybe. It's not Beth Roth. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in Iceland. You shall love the Lord with all your heart. Oh, you're going to do it. <laughs> with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. It's non-negotiable. It is coming out of God's word himself. And I'll go to any extent to give you that shall. And the dreadful place is to bring us. We can't, nobody can bring you. Anybody brought me. God brought me. My mother didn't bring me. My father didn't bring me. As a matter of fact, my father had no clue about my dreadful place. <laughs> he was too short-sighted. He didn't see me. He saw his little girl. He saw his daughter. <laughs> but he didn't see. He didn't see the assignment. Huh? He saw that I loved the Lord and that I was going to church, but he didn't see the wilderness experience. He didn't see the stripping. He didn't see the heavy load. So he couldn't be the one to bring me to a dreadful place. He would bring me to a place of cushioning. You don't want, you don't want your child to hurt. You don't want to see your child cry. So you're going to protect your child. But he didn't see that I had to be let loose. As Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted. My God, my God. <laughs> so he could come out and say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And anointed me to preach the gospel. You don't get no anointing like that in a cushioned place. You got to go through the wilderness. And we cannot legislate people's journey. We can only tell them, get ready for that place. And when you get to that place, nobody will have to tell you what to say. Nobody had to tell. He wasn't playing now. He ain't no player now. Jacob ain't playing. He ain't playing. The, the, the dreadful place knocked the player out of him. So if, if you just, if, if you just, if you just help me. If you just help me. I'll come back straight. And we know that he wrestled with the angel until his name was changed. God never misses an appointment. So my job today was to wise you up. Listen up, listen up. Yo, hey, listen up. The dreadful place creeping up on you. It's a sudden blast. It's a, 
It's a still small voice. It's a crying and don't know why you're crying. It's a pain and don't know where the pain came from. It's a yearning and nothing can satisfy it. What's wrong? It's a setup for a visitation. You need a visit. <laughs> hey, Lord. Yay, Lord. Hey. Yay, Lord. Yay, Lord. Yay, Lord. Oh, you all ain't with me. Yay, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. And I'm an answer. Yes. 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 Soul says yes. Soul says yes. Soul. Soul says yes. Nah, shepherd, yes. So, soul says yes. Come on, come with me, Zoomers. So. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, you sing it like you're hungry. Come on. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Yes. All the way. Oh, come on, raise your hand all the way, all the way. Oh, Emma, Mama, all all the way, all the way, all the way. Says yes, my soul. Hey, come on, raise your hand if you mean it. My soul says yes. Economy, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul says now. Come on and praise him now. <laughs> Open your mouth and praise him. Come on. Out of your belly, praise him. This is a dreadful place. This is a place of surrender. Oh, come on. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. I said, this is a place of surrender. God, come on. Come on. All the way. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know where you are out there on social media, but you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This is how he called his people. He said to the disciples, drop your nets. You're not going to catch fish anymore. You're going to catch men. Your life will never be the same. You will never, ever... You will try to go back because you're discouraged when I'm coming back for you. Because you have a place in the kingdom. 
I said, you have a place in the kingdom. Tell, you, tell yourself, I got a place in the kingdom. And nobody can fit in that place but you. And God carve out that place for your assignment. And no matter how long it takes, he knows where to find you. And if it's one minute before you cross over, you're going to go to that place. Because God is not a loser. He doesn't lose his investments. He gets profit out of his investments. So we thank you for joining us today. We thank you so much. I feel a dreadful place going to Hawaii. Somebody in Hawaii, the earth is shaking right now. There's a quaking coming. There's a shaking coming. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because God intends to gather his people. You're not a lost cause. You're not a waste. You are his jewel. And he's gathering his jewels. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back here at 6.30. My soul says yes.